the Coriolis effect is mentioned in the book a couple of times, but they really, the book really doesn't um, even make a, a decent attempt to explain it. So um, that's kind of my, my goal here. And here's our view of the Earth. Let's start there. Um, here's west, east, and um, the, the important idea here is not this view, but a view from above. So if we were above the North Pole looking down at it, in this fashion, we would get a view kind of like this, where this was the North Pole, and um, the Earth traveling or rotating in this direction, like so, in uh, kind of a west to east fashion. From above, it would take a um, counterclockwise spin. And so, the idea behind Coriolis effect is that the Coriolis effect is how how objects move because of this rotation. And you'll kind of see that in this video here. Here's a merry-go-round illustration. And the blue man just threw a ball to the pink man. And the yellow path shows the flight of the ball. All right, The merry-go-round hasn't moved, and they're standing still, and he throws the ball from point A to point B. All right, Real easy. But then things get a little bit more complicated when we start to spin that that merry-go-round. Now you'll see he's in a different path, but it, or a different position, but it doesn't matter. He's going to throw the ball, and his target's the pink man. But you'll see that the pink man is moving, and he is moving. The blue man's moving. So <coughs> the ball is following a straight path because the blue man threw it straight, but because of the movement of the rotation of the merry-go-round, the ball seems to have turned to the right, as you can see with this red dotted path. So it doesn't hit its target, and it appears to have kind of curved to the right after he threw the ball. They'll put him in two other positions, and this time from the outside in, the blue man's going to throw the ball. Throw it, there you go, and you'll see uh, here's the path of the ball, and here is what the blue man sees from his vantage point. So he threw it straight, and the ball is flying straight, but because of um, the rotation and the spin of the earth, or the spin of the merry-go-round, it appears to be turning toward the right. And we'll show one more. Hopefully it'll be fast. Hurry up. And again, he throws the ball. And once more, you'll notice that every time it appears that the ball is turning toward the right. And here we have another view. All right, same thing, <coughs> except you know our spinning disk is a map of the of the globe. And from the North Pole, um, the ball, I guess we can call it, is going to be going toward this target. But the target's going to be moving and spinning. And and the object is going to appear to take a right turn. Okay. Now, of course, um, well, we'll show it from outside in, and again, taking a right turn. And of course, uh, in the southern hemisphere, the rotation would be opposite, so the turn would be opposite when. Um, we're looking at it that it would appear to turn to the left. And again, turning toward the left. And that's in the southern hemisphere. And so we take a look at another video. Here's a <coughs> video of a merry-go-round. It's going to spin uh, the southern hemisphere away. It's going to be clockwise. And the ball is going to be turning, or appear to turn, to the left. Now watch this. It's kind of cool. The path of the ball appears straight, while to someone sitting on it, the ball appears to curve to the left. And you can see that every this time they the roll the ball or throw the ball, whereby it appears to, an to be going on the, the rotating earth, in the path a of an object right to left direction. Deflected. And this is a result. Let me rewind it again. It's kind of the ball appears to they curve. It, they the show left. it really fast. This exemplifies the Coriolis force, whereby to an observer on the rotating earth, the path of an object appears to be deflected. All right. So let's go back to my drawing here. And so it's kind of important um, for us, 
because the Coriolis effect, again, this is the Coriolis effect, um, causes the directions of the winds and how the winds don't blow really in a straight line. It's going to be in a, in, a, in a curved path. And in the northern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, it's going to turn to the right, turning to the right. And so when we talk about our low pressure systems, here's the low pressure system, and the winds wanting to enter the low pressure system, it's um, not going to be in a straight line in the northern hemisphere. It's going to go and turn toward the right. Turn toward the right, turn toward the right, turn toward the right. And so we end up with kind of a rotation this way because of the Coriolis effect and it's going to go in a counterclockwise motion so every hurricane in the northern hemisphere is going to rotate in a counterclockwise fashion and in the southern hemisphere um, I'm sure you would guess it would go the opposite way it would go in a clockwise direction hopefully you're not too confused that I cleared some things up for you um, watch the video again I'm going on six and a half minutes here longer than I had hoped um, we'll talk more about it in class um, but uh, hurricanes you know basically hurricanes move in a certain way because of Coriolis and winds move a certain way because of Coriolis and Coriolis, Coriolis is due to the spin of the earth thanks for watching